All the comic books from this episode come from the comic book station Dollar Ben, located in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Hello my fellow YouTubers. Hope everything's going well. What I have is a stack from the comic book station and basically uh, I got a stack of about somewhere around 20. I got some really good issues here. Um, some that are not really worth it. Some that are uh, key issues. Um, let's start off. Um, most of these were from the dollar bin at the comic book station. Uh, a very good uh, dollar bin that they have at the station. They have plenty of uh, bins there. And uh, you could just go spelunking in them. And at the same time, there's key issues all around the whole place. They also have CGC um, slabs for sale. And I think uh, it's a very good comic book store. If you want to know the value of your comic books, that place is very fair. Up to date with the most um, wanted uh, books. And uh, if you're new, you definitely should come by and visit the store. Show some support. They're also a great store with excellent service. Um, with that being said, let's uh, make this video nice and sweet and short. So my first one that I got was Archer Armstrong, issue zero. This is the first appearance of uh, Obadiah Archer, Thelma, and Joseph Archer. Um, all three Archers were first appearance on this issue. To me, this is valuable because Archer and Armstrong are literally a group of, a dual group that um, help each other out. They're, they have special... Um, not special powers, but I would say um, special traits that get them around, uh, especially around the other superheroes like Deadshot and Ninjak, all the other guys. But this is a very good issue. This also appears uh, the meeting between um, both Armstrong and Archer. So this is a very special issue because of the first appearance of Obadiah, but also the meeting of the two characters of Archer and Armstrong. Okay. And it does have some value, just not a lot of value. I assume somewhere around less than, I would say about four to five bucks, um, because their their popularity is not as big, but their comic book popularity is huge, and they're a very good duo. A lot of fun with them. Here's X Men Annual, number seven. Um, I really really like this cover. This is sort of like my childhood thing. I ran into this alien as a kid in the alien in the um, in the 80s. Excuse me. And I got, I must say, uh, he's caused so much chaos with the X-Men, um, sometimes X-Factor, I believe. But he is it's such a fun issue. Um, he's literally caused a commotion with the X-Men. And he's an alien that has shape-shifting abilities. And he shapeshifts all around the X-Men, causing a little bit of frustration and chaos. So, so basically, it, it's not a big value comic book. It's a fun issue uh, i bought this for the story and i bought this because i really like the story and i think that the cover and the characterization of this troubled individual who's an alien uh, was a lot of fun um no value in this one but a lot of fun um this is a very n novel uh, romantic uh avengers new avengers um 26 and there's no value in this. There is some sort of special event between uh, Wanda Maximoff and Clint Barton. So it's almost like a... Uh, I read this thing. It's almost like a novel for romantics. Um, wasn't fun. Has no value. Um, I really, you know, got it for... I got all these for a dollar. And to me, it's not a loss. But it's a great story. It's very romantic. It's not for everybody. It seems like a one-off, to be honest with you. Um, this is, I grabbed this because I love the artwork of, uh, this individual. I forgot his name. I knew who he was. He, he did a lot of issues for Thor. Um, I think it's Walt Simonson. And, uh, this is 282 Fantastic Four when She-Hulk was with, um, the Fantastic Four. This was a lot of fun. I love the artwork. The story is crazy it is all over the place uh even there's a special appearance with um the power pack which i thought was their first appearance but that's not true they have their own series which is their first appearance so uh, i probably do have that i'm not sure but we'll see in the future um as we take the adventures of uh sorting through all the comic books i've accumulated um, so this to me is a keeper i like the story though it is nuts um there is a individual at the end that they come looking for, and they found that individual, and they're in trouble. So that's how it ends. 
Um, this is Superman issue number 87. And this is the first appearance of the second Bizarro. This was a very interesting period. Um, literally, this is the origins of the second Bizarro. And uh, it's kind of tragic. Bizarro to me is very tragic because he thinks he's normal and he's not. He's literally the opposite um, on the upside down of things. So they, what they did was they put Superman backwards. They put DC upside down. And also, you know, they gave him his little me back. This was by Jurgens, and uh, Jurgens had a long run, including the death of Superman, and a lot of my favorite characters like Cyborg Superman. So this is definitely does it have value? No, I would say this is somewhere around three to four dollars. It doesn't have a high value, but if there was a movie with the second Bizarro, which is never going to happen, then this comic book would just rail in value, but it's not. I would say three to four dollars on this one. All the comic books are in excellent condition. This was given to me by a guy next to me who said you should take this comic book this has a lot of value in it and I read the comic book and I know why he meant that way is this is actually the first time they say born again which is now going to be a Disney Plus Daredevil show titled born, uh, born again and this was a very good comic book this is a very good read this is when actually Daredevil attacks Kingpin and Kingpin's trying to really just get away from him trying to live his normal life and daredevil will not let him go he does not forgive kingpin for what he does and they literally go to new york city landmarks um not one in particular not the favorite one which is the port authority so that it, this issue is insane it is well written well done artwork was there it was just a phenomenal issue and um Will it have value? Not as much as Born Again. It's not Born Again. It is the 300th issue. But the story of Kingpin getting attacked by Daredevil and Daredevil not stopping. And they're going through a whole bunch of like, um, like fighting abilities between the both of them. And it's, it's really ironic and sad as Kingpin is trying to prove himself innocent and Daredevil is just like no you're not innocent you're going to jail you're going down it is just like the last episode of the Netflix Daredevil it is in the same retrospect um value of this not so much but great story excellent art it's just one of those comic books that gets a lot of very good things going but it doesn't get the popularity that it deserves but if you read it i recommend it it's a great story um green lantern number one this is literally a spin-off uh of green lantern back in the 80s i believe this is green lantern one uh my mistake, it was the 90s. So this is a 1990s issue one Green Lantern comic book. Um, this has no value. Uh, I read it, and honestly, it's just a start off of a new era of Green Lantern. Uh, it's not about his first appearance or anybody else's. It's literally a continuation of the next coming uh, year. And trust me, ever since I was a kid, I kept collecting these in the further issues. Some of the storylines to me were just, you know, they weren't that fun. They were okay. Um, but they could be better, you know, but they weren't. Um, but this first issue of Green Lantern, I grabbed because I don't have it. So now I have it. Um, this is the Origins of Rage. Uh, this is issue 328 of the Avengers. This is, uh, I believe, a 90s issue, of course. 1990, yes, 1990. Now... This is a very good story. It tells the how Rage became who he is, which is this body. And it really gives it out from here because he really got um, mixed in some chemicals that were dumped after being bullied by a bunch of uh, other men. Uh, he ended up at the end of a sewer underground and f kind of like submerged himself. And when he got out, there was a group of men dumping some toxic chemicals and it went right on top of him and became the Rage. Uh, I know it's a spoiler, but that is really what this comic book partially is about. The rest of it, in the beginning, the Rage and the Avengers are literally just, you know, going against some sort of bad guy I don't care about. Um, it wasn't that fun, but at the end, when it came to the story of Rage, that's where this issue lies. Um, and that's why the cover has this um, this whole definition of what they're truly intending to do. Um, next issue, as you saw, is Shazam. This is not the first appearance. The first appearance was actually in Legends. Um, this is actually a full-fledged uh, spin-off 
to start off Shazam. Um, Shazam has came a very long way on the 50s. Um, he was also actually Captain Marvel. But this this is a modernized Shazam. This Shazam is actually the movie Shazam. And um, Billy Baxton is right here. And where this all lies is in one of the issues of Legends, which also is the first appearance of um, the leader, or uh, uh, the manipulator, I should say, Wanda, uh, I forgot her name, um, of uh, the Suicide Squad. So this was really a spinoff. They had four issues at the comic book station. I only grabbed this one and this one. There was only four, and I could have had the whole collection, but I just decided to, to hit the landmark ones and just save the space for other comic books. Those other comic books didn't matter. It was just a continuation of the story. I read it. I thought it was okay. I just decided to get the first issue and be a, you know, a first issue whore. <laughs> And this was a good fight between Shazam and Black Adam. I just felt it was such a short storyline, but it was done very well. I mean, it introduced Billy Baxton as Shazam as as it, as it wasn't his first appearance. This is a brand new series that they just wanted to kickstart uh, because it was becoming po this duo was becoming very popular. Um, this is a Thor annual, and by the way, no value. I would say this is somewhere around two to three dollars. That's it. it. Not more than that. Um, but it's kind of a shame because it seems like a first appearance and it's not. Their first appearance was actually in Legends. Thor Annual, issue number 12. This, uh, was, I grabbed this because it looked old. <laughs> I wanted to see what it was all about. I didn't spend time reading it. And when I got home, I read it. I understood it. And it was an interesting story. To me, it was just one of those tales of Thor's uh, homeland uh, where one of his brothers, his wife is murdered. And he blames Odin and everyone. And he he's looking for a way of finding out who did it for revenge. And from there on, I, I can't go any further than that. It's a decent story it's just a predictable one and the artwork is you know very old and very i shouldn't say old it's 1984 so it was in this time period ahead of itself and for me it was fun to see the artwork and the pages which are newspaper print um is it worth anything not really i would say this issue is somewhere around i guesstimate uh, i guesstimate somewhere around two to three dollars as well kind of a shame being that of a one dollar book but literally the story just runs on and on and on about revenge and, and murder and, you know, there's nothing special about this. But it keeps you within the realm of, of um, Asgard. Um, this is a valuable issue. This has some value. This is the first cameo appearance of um, King Shark. And this is uh, Superboy issue number zero. This is the actual issue that came after the death of Superman and uh, the whole story of, of Superboy in this was pretty okay pretty mediocre it was it was nothing nothing you know nothing worth it but the appearance of King Shark made this issue um, really special but they didn't show the whole thing it was just a cameo appearance with just his teeth and him doing his work for the last page so I think you know that's the only value that comes out of this Superboy is it worth it I think it is I think it's a great issue of how this individual starts his own way before Superman long hair comes in and takes over but at this point everyone assumes Superman's dead so he's one of the Supermen that that comes abroad and has his own issues uh, as a spinoff I actually do have steel as well I just got that so you're gonna see that in another series I love Alpha Flight. Alpha Flight is a very tragic Canadian team. And I just think that this issue in particular, they've been through a lot of losses, um, had a lot of tough times with each other. And amazing enough, Wolverine was at a part of the early stages of Alpha Flight. This issue has no value, but it tells the story of Guardian. Guardian was killed off. This tells the story of how Guardian came back, how he was somehow with aliens who helped him update the technology of his body, and he came back to Alpha Flight. So I think this is a great story. It was fun. The artwork was there. It's the common 1980s artwork for Alpha Flight. 
and I was very pleased with it. They had a lot of these issues, and I just like, let me grab one, let me read it, and I loved it. And uh, do I recommend for reading? Yes. Do I recommend for collecting? No. <laughs> no value. Um, like I say, first appearances are high value than deaths. Deaths, they could bring the back the person. So, and here we go. Last one, but not least, Digitech. I could not find this in the database. This does not even show up. This is even a Marvel comic here. And uh, it's in excellent condition. And literally, this is an origin story about um, the internet coming to life. Some sort of technological being. And he kind of formulates like, um, uh, like nothing but power and electricity. And then he starts building up his body. It was a very interesting issue. I will not collect the rest. Um, because I just feel like it's just, you know, it, I just don't relate to it. I just don't. I like how it starts, but I don't know how it ends. There were some new characters at the end of it, and I couldn't find part two. So I just decided, you know what, I'll just hold on to this. I want to get it anyway. It is a first appearance. It is a Marvel comic that has been forgotten, and um, no one cares about it. But I think it's a very interesting story. I think it's a great aspect to start a movie. Um, is it worth a lot? No, is it um, is it uh, worth having a collection? I think so because it is an origin story. It is a pretty good story. It's a typical origin story, and uh, you start learning a little bit more about the character in the last four pages, and that's literally what it is. I mean, when you get issue two, if I get it, maybe I might have some interest buying it, um, but for a dollar, of course. This this was a dollar, and they had about four copies, and that is it. That is it for this. Uh, this grouping of comic books. I hope you enjoyed this. There will be more. Um, just remember I'll be going to certain comic books. Uh, and it's only. Like this is a personal archive for me. But at the same time. You understand that. I look for value in comic books as well. Story wise. And also visual wise. But more story wise. Um, and thank you. Please subscribe and like. If you like this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.